Hey Mike, how's your water tasting? It's fantastic. Good to see you again. So I've got my uh, my Navian uh, RO lemon water. Yeah. And uh, let me say, it, I, I better take a little sip here, make sure it's delicious. Uh, if I don't like the water, can I file warranty on it or? Sure thing. We'll we'll see what we do about that. The lights are going off at Navian Corporate. What are you guys talking about the Navian booth? So we got a whole bunch of new new products here to display. Uh, first off is that RO water. So this will be coming out in a couple months. That's cool. Uh, with that, the great feature here is we eliminated the tanks. So this is a tankless RO system. You can easily plumb that in right underneath your fixtures, right underneath your faucets. Uh, it does need power to it. So one of the differences to this versus a lot of other units on the market is there is actually a small pump in there. So we're forcing that water through there. It gives us better flow rate through that fixture. Uh, and it does come with actually a dedicated fixture to it. Really? With that, there is actually a real-time TDS sensor built into this. Gotcha. Uh, so right on the other side of that wall there, you can actually use it if you want. But what happens is if you pull it forward, it gives you RO water. If you push this back, it just gives you filtered water. And so not I just RO. realized, I thought you were a tech guy. You're hitting me with a sales pitch. You're giving me the Navian RO water. It's literally coming from the new tankless RO that, technology. Let's make sure you drink some of the best <laughs> water out there. Yeah, this is the tastiest Navian. I endorse this Navian water as long as I'm in this booth. <laughs> Move every all the contaminants right so there. So right? the point of use device is designed. I can put that underneath my sink. I've got a nice little fixture, and I know I'm getting good water out of it. Absolutely. That's a really cool idea. What yeah. else you got? Uh, we also got a carbon block filter coming out soon. Oh, cool. So this is going to remove selected pharmaceuticals from the water. Uh, this is going to keep some of the key vitamins, minerals that you still want in your water, though. Uh, so better tasting water. Yeah. Removing some of the stuff, but not quite RO quality water off. That's that an water. interesting comment. A lot of people don't think about like taking all the minerals out of the water isn't always a good thing you can actually cause negative effects to your body yep. if you're drinking RO water where all the minerals have got out of it I'm not a chemist but I've had people warn me about it absolutely so. I know a couple of people that, that have RO water they, they swear on just drinking RO water but they make sure they're still taking their vitamins yeah and exactly the exactly so, awesome yeah. what else we got uh, we also got over here we got something called a WEC okay well let's wander right. around this way let's and see if we can have a look at it yeah uh, so this will be coming out in just a couple of months. Yep. Um, this is a substitute to using a water softener. This is basically giving you almost RO quality water for your entire house. Gotcha. Uh, with that, there is a pre-filter that gets installed before that, so that if you are in an area such as yourself, Cambridge, yeah, Kitchener, yeah. Wolf, uh, we want to make sure that that TDS is not way too hard coming through there. Uh, but with that, we're using electric membranes within this product that are negatively and positively charged. So yep. as the water flows through there, all the contaminants will actually stick to that. Uh, there's some TDS sensors built into that as well. So once it sees that one of those tanks is kind of starting to fill up with contaminants, it'll actually start to switch using the other tank and then it goes back and forth while you're using water. And so from a serviceability standpoint, do I need to replace the media? What do I need to do this unit down the road? So with that, great question. This top tank that you'll see there needs to be kept filled with a 50% citric acid, 50% gotcha. water solution. And what that system's gonna do is every about 2,000 gallons of usage, it's gonna drain the water that's in those tanks. It opens up an internal bypass. You still get water for your house while it's doing this. And it's gonna spray citric acid in there and then we got a small pump in there. I'm gonna spray some water in there as well. We're gonna circulate that through those tanks for about an hour and then flush that down the drain. So really, unlike some of the other systems, because the concept is not new, any of us working on boilers, we're familiar with the negatively positively charged ions. Yep. What's unique about this is obviously the application of it and the fact you're not replacing media. It's basically, a, I'm gonna say self-cleaning. I know we hate that term, yep. but it'll yep. clean itself. Very little maintenance to it. Gotcha. Uh, and with that, you know, again, it's, it's almost RO quality water for the entire house. The nice thing about that is you're showering with some of the cleanest possible water you know you're doing your dishes everything with that really clean water um, and you're not having to repipe an entire system as you would have to do if it was RO for your entire yeah. house very cool that's yeah. awesome well let's keep going yeah, let's see let's more of what you got uh, so we got another product here uh, this one's not out yet. Uh, this is going to be our commercial boiler series. Look at the control launch. on that beast. Yeah, so we got a nice 10 inch touchscreen here. Uh, with this product, when it does come out, it's going to be available in four sizes. Uh, we're going to have a 500, a 600, an 800, and a 1 million BTU boiler. Uh, and that's going to be capable of running four circulators right off that system. Uh, this is a touchscreen, so a very user-friendly user interface there. Uh, you know, we can turn space heating on or off, get into our parameters. 
you know, a nice password protected screen there so that you know somebody who shouldn't be playing with that hopefully is not playing yeah. with the advanced features as well. So this unit does heating as well as domestic hot water as we can see on the screen. Are you doing a plate? Like how are you doing the domestic hot water in this unit? I'm going to recommend you do it through an indirect tank. Gotcha. Uh, especially uh, when you're looking at you know, yeah, yeah. a million BTUs. want to make sure we've got enough delta T. So this is just the boiler. You do your domestic like we did traditionally with an indirect. I'm like you. I would prefer an indirect if possible, especially for commercial. Absolutely. Commercial, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. That is a cool looking unit. It, it looks like a space age refrigerator. Hopefully nobody takes offense to that, but no, no, absolutely. Cool I think it's great. Unit. The back looks great as well. Connections, yeah. everything's very user friendly. It looks like a high end refrigerator. Like it looks like I, something I, you put I, in I your mechanical see, room. It, it yeah, looks I cool. I never thought about calling it the fridge before, but maybe we should start calling it the Navian fridge. As Let's well. call it the so, fridge. I mean, yeah. we'll yeah, put yeah. Some, some cold water in there for next year. Very cool. Yeah. So basic connections on the bottom, right? Water in, water out. Your exhaust air intake. Yep. And this is still prototype, so some of this might might yeah, change of course. a little bit. No, that's but cool. But nice thing here, you know, you look at the front there. Of course, want to make sure that you can pick that up with a pallet jack or a uh, um, forklift and so on. So we do actually have an additional plate there at the front to actually hide it, give it a nice finished look. Oh, that's so, nice. The ability to so. pick it up, right? Like you can actually pick it up with a forklift and move it around. Yep. And I'm assuming that Navian designed this to fit through a mechanical room door. It looks like it'll fit. Absolutely, absolutely. We gotta make sure that's less than 36 there to go yeah. in. So. That's sweet. I like that. That's cool. I didn't know you guys had that. Yeah. Very cool. Come out soon. So, and then we got a uh, demo here showing our tankless water heaters yep. on a rack system. Uh, all that is currently available. We've had that a couple years. One of the nice features there with our tankless get into commercial applications is our common vent capability. Yep. So at the top of those units there, you'll see that the exhaust collar is actually a little bit taller than the intake. Yeah. So a nice feature there is we can actually common vent up to 12 of our water heaters together yeah. using one intake, one exhaust for entire system. Well, and as you've identified, by having them staggered like that, it makes it easier to do the common venting and it's not running into each other. Absolutely. Yeah. Elbow that forward, elbow it back, depending on wherever you want yeah. to get the, that pet, vent pipe. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. Well, let's keep going. Francesco yep. will catch up with us. Awesome. Yeah, we got a great uh, back yeah. pair of both here, so a nice graphic there. I like when manufacturers so. take the time to do a nice big bat lit graphic. It really lets you see all of the offerings and you can find it in the booth. Absolutely. And on the other side of this, we actually have a giant screen that we'll show you in a couple minutes. Are we going to be on that screen? Uh, I'm on that screen here, actually. <laughs> I pop up in some videos there, so. That's it. Interview's over. Yeah, we have a lot of... <laughs> We got a lot of service videos on our website showing nice. you how to replace every single part. So we are playing those videos on the nice. back side there. Nice. Uh, coming into this section here, this is kind of our water heater section. So far left side, we got our non-condensing water heaters. Those are only available in the US. Yeah, we talked uh, about that before. Yeah. In parts of the United States, they're still doing non-condensing. Where we're from in Canada, it's not really that common. Correct, yeah, not, not a Canadian thing. Uh, and then right over here, we actually have a new product coming out later this year, which is our heat pump water heater. Okay. Uh, when this comes out, there will actually be three different versions available. So we're going to okay. have a builder series, we're going to have a, a pro series, and then more premium options as well. Slightly different features between the units. Uh, with that, we are going to have it in two sizes, both a 65 and an 80 gallon capability right. to that. Uh, and you can duct that or not duct it, depending on where you're actually installing Yeah, because certainly if you look at places like California and certainly anywhere in Canada, we have that 2050 mandate to get away from gas. Yeah. And obviously, in my opinion, gas has a place to hold, but having a heat pump water heater product does make a lot of sense. Yeah, a lot of technology is going the heat pump way. So cool. Great now, to have that. you guys actually have a heat pump somewhere here in this booth, too. Yeah, Can we see that? Yeah, on the other side of that wall. So let's, let's go have a look at that. Over here, we got our kind of our HVAC lineup. And what kind of heat pump is this, Matt? Uh, so that is actually a Navin in-house heat pump that we have right there. Okay. Um, so this is our HVAC side. So a couple different equipments that we're saying here. There's, of course, that heat pump. First thing to show you here, though, is going to be our NPF S system or NPF 700 S. Uh, this is a 100,000 BTU furnace, essentially, that is actually capable of providing domestic hot water for your house as well. Uh, so you'll see at the top of that, there's some tappings there, so you can have your supply and return to that indirect tank. Uh, with that, there is a circulator that's actually behind that front panel here. Yep. Uh, and in heating mode, that's going to grab the water from the return center coil. It's going to pump it up through our hydronic heat exchanger. From there, it goes through your hydronic coil in the back and then just keeps circulating through that system. Yeah, so the great market for this technology, I have something like this in my own home. The advantage to this is if you're currently under a rental water heater and have a furnace, you can take both of those things out, put one appliance in, you have a much smaller mechanical room footprint, and you've got the reliability of one appliance and you've got one guy or gal that's taking care of that piece of equipment for you. Absolutely. I'm On top of that, that. We're looking at this as one of the most comfortable systems for a customer because of our turndown ratio capability. 
So when we look at that system and you compare it to a lot of other furnaces, this unit can fire down to lower values. Yep. So our 60,000 BTU furnace can actually fire down to 9,000 BTUs. Yeah. 100,000 can fire down to 14,000 BTUs. So we get this longer runtime for more consistent heat to that house, yeah. as well as a more comfortable heat going into that house because the way we program this is to actually maintain a supply air temperature yep. anywhere from 90 to 150 degrees. So it's not that scorched air feeling yeah. like some furnace. Well, so people it. that are using heat pumps currently will recognize that we're sort of confused that we expect that if we're going to heat a home, we have to go to like 2,000 degrees to heat that home. Yeah. The reality is we can deliver lower temperatures. We just need to understand ourselves just because we don't feel blasted hot air on ourselves doesn't mean it's not working. S still heating, yeah. I've lived with this technology. A big fan, as you know. Like yeah. it's, it's really cool technology. I definitely uh, want to get my hands on one and get to play around with it at some point. You so. have to stop by our office. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We got some more units as well. Okay. We got the heat pump on over there. Yep. And then the newly released, or I should say, coming soon, coming uh, in about a month, uh, is going to be our horizontal unit. So if okay. you're doing an install in a crawl space, do an install in an attic, this will be your more go to unit here. Gotcha. So, so this comes as a heating only version that's an upflow over there or the horizontal heating version. And again, that other unit we're looking at is the system version to domestic. Gotcha. So what's different between the unit we're looking at right here versus the one we just looked at in the corner? So that unit in there in the corner actually has a diverting valve to it so that it can actually use that same circulator using for space heating to yep. actually put that flow through that indirect tank. Gotcha. Versus this one doesn't have the tappings, doesn't have that valve, so this is strictly for heating. Only. Gotcha. So that one is the heating and domestic. This one is the heating only and uh, available in horizontal or vertical if you're going into a crawl space, attic space, as long as you're meeting code, right? We don't want to install yeah, somewhere. Yeah, make sure we got proper clearance space and so on. So. Very cool. Yeah. That's great. And then the heat pump. Talk a little bit about the heat pump. Uh, so the heat pump's brand new stuff for us. Uh, we're just starting to kind of get into that. That'll be coming out early next year is our yep. target for that. Yep. Um, with that heat pump, uh, Ken here, I'm going to put him on the spot, uh, is actually one of our product managers for HVAC. So meet Ken. Ken, Michael. Ken, how are you, man? So we're doing the walk around the Navian booth, and this is your new air-to-air -air unit. Just give us a quick rundown on this air-to-air -air unit. Well, it's our new air-to-air. -air. We're kind of forward-looking, right? You see we're pulling our HVAC product from line. This is a first quarter 2025, so when we're changing, the industry's changing refrigerants. 454B. Okay. Right, so it's a multi-capacity unit, so two to four, uh, four to five. 17 sear, sear 2, a variable capacity. Gotcha. So you guys are basically looking at it. You're going to try to own the home, so to speak, right? Expanding beyond. Obviously, you guys started as a boiler company. This is me speaking, not Navian, so if I get it a little bit wrong, and you sort of transition to other things, you do a lot with water quality. You have this really nice combi furnace set up, and very soon you'll be in heat pumps. Absolutely, yes, sir. And I think you guys also have an air to water that's somewhere out there that Matt's giving me that, like, ah! <laughs> but, but nobody's watching. It's just me, you, and a camera. <laughs> <laughs> we're, you know, we're talking about electrification, right? That's yeah. a buzzword these days. So the heat pumps out, gas furnaces out, yeah. dual fuel application, kind of that incremental step. Yeah. So I think the industry is starting to realize that we can't get rid of gas entirely. Yep. This gives us an incremental step to that. Yeah. Uh, you've nailed a good thing. Like in Canada, where we are both from, the reality is we have a mandate by 2050 to electrify. Right. And there's areas in California and places in the States where it's essential. And, you know, my background is predominantly in heat pumps, as Matt knows. I started in heat pumps, got into boilers. People were like, what is this guy doing? But the reality is there's a place for both, right? Absolutely. There's places in Canada and the United States where it makes sense to be 100% heat pump. Nobody here is going to argue that. But if I go into a climate where it makes sense to have a heat pump that's backed up by a fuel of your choice, I always use the example that I've lost a lot of weight, and at no time did my doctor say, Michael, you're a failure. You've only lost 30 pounds, and you're supposed to lose 40. If we can cut back on our gas consumption by 30 to 50%, that's a good thing. Like, let's make little steps, head in that direction. We're all saying the same thing. Like, we know we need to reduce our carbon footprint, yep. but if we're gonna build some big expensive method to do it and if people can't afford it, right? right a solution like this, if it's cost effective and it reduces the gas consumption, that's as good as a heat pump, it's as good as a ground source. There's lots of options. So, Ken, thanks for coming on camera, man. Oh, nice to meet you. And Matt, what a pleasure, my friend, oh, to do pleasure. it again. Thanks for we'll see you again. From, uh, Navian water. Yeah, well, the Navian water was absolutely delicious. There'll be no RMA or warranty requirements this time. When I come by the Live Fire Lab at your place so we can actually do some piping, I expect some Navian lemon water every single time. We'll do it. Set it up. <laughs> awesome, brother. Thanks.